Hey guys, what's up? We're back with another episode of Tarot Talks. Um, we're going to do two kings today, and this is going to be the female elements. This is going to be water and earth. We got the king of pentacles here, Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, third deacon of Aries, first and second deacons of Taurus. So this is very much a Taurian card, even though you can, you know, if you want to be simple with it at first and you're just trying to remember the zodiac signs that are attributed to earth, Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus. But if you you know want to get more advanced with it and really assign it to some someone it's going to be very Taurian. your planetary rulers are venus and mars so venus and mars are you know historical lovers so when they get together they have they procreate so this is very much a spring card you're going to see that in imagery of the card um of the the plants popping up all over the place and it's it's very productive it's it's very much about producing things and i like to assign males to this card who get their hands dirty just because it's earth it's like you know you're you're picking up the earth you're moving it you're molding it you're shaping it so these are people who get their hands dirty for work these are laborers these are um people who use tools and come home with dirty hands and dirty boots and that's just how I like to, to do it because I just, I feel very, I feel like for me, it really much, it very much relates to that. So this is fixed earth, the modality of Taurus, but it is a feminine gender as far as zodiac signs and, you know, how they're assigned to gender. It's feminine um, and it's active masculine as well. So we have tiny, tiny bit of feminine, but a lot of active masculine because it's very much related to the emperor. Um, number four, which emperor is the major arcana card that the kings relate to. And that's very much about building and laying the foundations. And if you look into Freemasonry and Masons, they always lay the cornerstones first. It's just the, the foundations. There's always got to be four building blocks before they build anything. There's always four first. So that's why the emperor relates to four. And um, that's why we we have um an element of building and experience these are people who know what they're doing this is all you can also put the keyword of mastery to the kings and if we're talking about the mixed the aryan uh tarian vibe we're talking about people who have a very hot temper these are animal horned animals that charge um anytime you have a horned animal you're going to have an air of um, testiness and you know an air of people who can be kind of explosive with their temper whereas Aries is very fiery and very ready to act right away Taurus is a little bit more passive because of that feminine Venus element and you got to poke them a lot for them to get crazy but once you do oh boy you don't want to see that happen so the next card is going to be the king of cups king of cups is third deacon of Libra first and second deacons of Scorpio so if we were talking about the times of the year, this is talking about the fall. So we're talking about late October, um, beginning to middle of November. Your rulerships are going to be, excuse me, Venus and Pluto. So we have this, this element of feminine and masculine with Pluto, but Pluto is very dark. It's very mysterious. It's very, it very much talks about the subconscious and not the consciousness but the subconsciousness and things that are underneath the surface so we may have people who are very prideful and hide their feelings and hide their pain and hide their their deep deep emotions so there are people that maybe you have to get to know them a little bit to be able to really connect to them emotionally um this is a keywords are going to be fluid calm empathic sensitive very, they're very in tune with their female partner and what their female partner's needs are in the bedroom. This is a male active card, but it has very much a female vibe to it because anytime we're talking about water, we're talking about the sacred feminine, the mother. Now, if you watched my last video with the aces and I was talking about on the uh, ace of cups, there was that thing that looked like a W, but when you turn it around, it's very much an M. And again, I just want to reiterate, anytime you see an M, it's very much related to the mother, and it also is very representative of water. So we have the phallic symbol of the scepter and the chalice together. So he's, I feel like he's kind of like, 
you know, weighing out his masculine and femininity here. And But the femininity is more about the dreams and the consciousness and the connection to the deeper realms of the universe. Um, again, here's a little, little bit of um, Scorpio. If you look into astrotheology, that is going to be the source of all of your um, religious mythology, okay? So when the god and the goddess get together, he impregnates her in the fall. But in late fall, once the, they hit the zodiac sign of Scorpio, Scorpio is what kills him. And she's already pregnant, but when he dies, his soul is reincarnated into her womb and into the baby in her womb. So I know it's kind of creepy, but he is born through her, and then he becomes her lover after, as the, the zodiac wheel progresses, after she gives birth to him through the spring, you know, he grows up. And it's it's not supposed to be like, um, like Oedipus, like an Oedipus thing at all. It's just, um, I think... It, it's just kind of letting you know about that male and female aspects in the duality. So you kind of have to separate, you know, that kind of ew factor from it. But anyway, when you get around to the Taurian wheel, he's stung. I mean, the scorpion, the scorpion, the astrological wheel, the scorpion stings the god and he dies from his venom. So that's why there's a darker element to Scorpio. And Scorpios can, they have that darker element. They can be very vindictive. Um, a lot of times if you heard of Scorpio, they're, they're going to do kind of a lot of things to get back to you, you know? Um, I've dated a lot of Scorpios. Um, for some reason, I'm very much attracted to the opposite of my zodiac sign, which is Taurus. And I've just found that they're very, they're very manipulative sometimes, um, with their words. They could say things that are very hurtful, but most of the times it's not out of nowhere it's because they're very hurt so they have that hard shell of the scorpion that protects their feelings and their their insides but they also have that tail and them claws that will snap back at you so there's just some um you know astro theology for you and some you know imagery and some keywords that you can pull and if you have any questions hit me up get back to me. Um, you can view all of these videos on YouTube. Um, if you're watching this on IGTV, you can go back to my YouTube channel and you can see all of these videos on YouTube. Um, Lady M Tarot Talks. You Google it, it come right up. Easy peas. Okay, so if you have any questions, um, comment. I love engaging with you guys and give it a like, even share it. But um, I hope you guys learn stuff from this. I'm giving you the most information jam-packed into one video. Um, I had to search all over while I was learning this stuff between books and hours and hours of reading and hours and hours of videos. And I really want you guys to pick this up and learn it and not be intimidated. So I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you soon.